Greetings fellow humans, I'm Martian Boo, and today I have for you 10 more decks for Murder at Castle Nathria. This is another deck in each class. I was trying to make something fun to play with in every class, so the competitive viability on each of these may differ, but hopefully you find something fun you're interested in to try out on day one. First up we have Relic Demon Hunter. So the relics I don't expect to be super game changing for wild, but I wanted to showcase them and play around with them myself. Finding something to do to win with them because they don't really win on their own was well, a bit of a challenge. So how the relics work is the more relics you play, the better your relics become. We have Relic of Extinction that deals damage to minions twice. I think this would have been a lot easier to build if it ever went face, but because it doesn't go face, the relics need something supplementary to actually finish your opponent off with. Then Relic of Phantasms, which makes two one ones, and Relic of Dimensions, which draws two cards and reduces their cost by one. This is the most interesting relic as far as as I'm concerned, the more relics you play, the higher the discount is. I've heard that this discount is infinite, and I've heard that the discount stops at four. I can't tell you which one it is with certainty, but I'll find out tomorrow. <laughs> Either way though, the discount is really big, so we want to have stuff in our deck that values that giant discount. The win conditions of the deck are Kurtris, so the hero power becomes one mana deal two, and you can refresh it whenever a minion attacks between the relic that makes minions and other token generators in the deck. You can get a bunch of extra attack out of nowhere. With Fellfire Deadeye out, that hero power is free, so you can just use it for as many of your things as can attack. We also have Aldrachi Warblades alongside Ilganoth. So that much damage doubled if you have your Ilganoth and your Aldrachi Warblades equipped. Again, we have the Dispose of Evidence and Bibliomite that we had in yesterday's video. I'm really interested to explore the applications of this as far as rearranging your hand. So we do have a Skull of Gul'dan in our deck, so we can kind of nudge that over through some of our higher cost things over to the left using those cards. So yeah, I was doing my best to make Relics be able to do something wild exclusive. I'm not expecting this deck to win any prizes, but it looks fun and I'll uh, I'll have some fun trying out the relics, see what they're like. Next up we have Extra Large Dragon Druid, Wild Bloom Seedsman. For mana 3-2 you gain a mana crystal and you draw a nature spell. The problem with 4 mana cards in Druid is Oaken Summons. You can't have an efficient Oaken Summons package as well as having a 4 or less cost minion that is an Injured Marauder or Archmage Vargoth. So what I've done here is I've run an Extra Large with Prince Renathal, so you're running a deck that doesn't want Oaken Summons anyway because it has a three or less cost minion. Since Oaken Summons is disqualified, you get to run a lot of the good four or less cost minions that you otherwise couldn't. So we have Widow Bloom Seedsman. We also have Flubidinous Flute and Grand Bronzebeard. These cards are just a combo with some of our late game dragons. So our big win condition is Malagos. So Malagos does not need a lot to actually OTK anymore. Moonbeam is a very, very strong spell for Malagos because it double dips on the spell damage buff. So with Malagos or Malagos Flute for two Malagos, this does a ton of damage. And if it's not enough, you can play Solar Eclipse to get two iterations of the double deal six. We also have dragons that damage on their own. We have both Alexstrasza. We have the one that sets your opponent to 15 and the one that deals eight. The one that deals eight gets extra value with Flubidinous Flute and Brand Bronzebeard. If all else fails, we do have the Kazakusan win condition. I don't think this card is necessary, but I really wanted to to play with it because we finally have a seven mana dragon to make our juicy psych melon work and draw four cool dragons. This is Topior the Shrubagazor, Trogdor reference. <laughs> For the rest of the game, after you cast nature spell, summon a 3-3 three, three whelp with rush. You don't have to alter your deck whatsoever to get extra whelps out of this. I think this card is very good for dragon decks and maybe just for druid in general. That's very cool. And then we also have Sire Denathrius. I think Sire Denathrius is actually really nifty in druid because it's a supplemental win con in any druid deck that's running scales or flipper friends. Because this is an extra large deck, we are running both of them. So we have Denathrius as a way to get extra value out of our seeds, flipper friends, scales, and we also have Floop's Glorious Goo to get all the extra mana. I really like it when packages for things have a lot of crossover, so there's multiple payoffs for using your token spells. This is a very greedy druid deck, but it also has all the druid good stuff except for Oaken Summons. I've had a lot of success with decks 
deck similar to this one and this has a lot of really cool new tools from the new set so maybe you'll enjoy it too next up we have quest hunter and this is not quest line hunter this is unseal the vault hunter so summon 20 minions and then you get pharaoh's war mask which is the hero powered two mana all of your minions have plus two attack permanently the idea behind this deck is to find a place for huntsman altimore so he wants you to go wide so they can summon more animal companions the oldham quest wants you to go wide there you are like yesterday we have frenzied fangs and we have all of the good wild seed cards all of those perform the same function there are one card that makes multiple bodies which is what you want to keep the quest line progressing we also have famished fool in here so the deck is built to activate infuse this is an interesting infuse card it's not very good off the top but five mana three five draw three cards seems good to me in a class that otherwise is kind of on draw so if anything it's just in here so i can try it out but it could be good refill. The main draw of the deck is Buzzard. So whenever you summon a beast, draw a card. And then we have a bunch of cards that either generate beasts or are beasts. The only actual beasts we have in the deck are Buzzard, Wolpertinger, and Alley Cat. That way, when you play Selective Breeder, you can always find a Buzzard. And if you have a Buzzard, you can use it to just go get Alley Cat or Wolpertinger so you can draw more cards. But then all the other cards in the deck pretty much produce beasts. So you have your Adorable Infestation, Wound Prey, all the Wild Seeds, Unleash the Hounds to draw you cards alongside buzzer speaking of unleash the hounds unleash the hounds is kind of your win condition it's charge that's wide so you benefit from the wide plus two attack buff you can combo that with leroy jenkins once you get to 10 mana in addition to getting the leroy jenkins burst damage it also makes two whelps so there's two more minions for you to get two more hounds with so it's a ton of burst damage out of nowhere how good is this deck? Nobody knows, but I think it'll be a lot of fun. I always feel like Unsteal the Vault is going to be something someday, and maybe this is the start of it being in that position. Next up, we have Secret Mage again. Yay! But this time, it's Reno Secret Mage. You know the one drops for Secret Mage are bad when I'm not happy including any of them in a Highlander deck. This is a lot like the Secret Mage I showcased yesterday, except instead of trying to figure out which of the excellent two drops we should run, we're running all of them, but only half of them. And as a bonus, we get to run the highlander cards which are all very strong still the only new card in here that wasn't in yesterday is scuttlebutt ghoul four mana two five taunt battle cry if you control a secret summon a copy of this four mana two five eh. but you do get two of them and serenai chain gang can be pretty good at four mana into specific decks and this has two more health on each copy than that so maybe it helps position you to be a little bit more survivable into your renos and stuff like that later on in the game next up we have extra large paladin so renathal tends to be kind of sub optimal because as nice as it is to have 10 more health up front it's pretty bad to have to run the next percentile down of cards in your deck just because you have to run those extra 10 cards it makes it a lot harder to find your best cards and it lowers the average quality of cards in your deck because you're not running the 30 best you're running the 40 best but the less you care about your cards the lesser that downside becomes with things like quests as well as the baku hero power a lot more of your power is allocated to aspects aspects of your deck that are guaranteed you're not worried about drawing your hero power that's just always active so you just get the 10 health and then you work with whatever of the various things that work with your hero power that said odd paladin hasn't been a meta monster in a while uh, i did get a few cool new tools as well as some that are probably in here just for fun new cards we have promotion so one mana give a silver hand plus three plus three i think this is the best new odd paladin card but it does have some competition so one mana three three is phenomenal we have sinful sous chef which I don't know about this one. So it's a 1 mana 2 1, Death Rattle add 2 Silver Hand recruits to your hand. 1 mana 2 1 is pretty meh as far as turn 1 plays go. It does give you the extra recruits to play and to benefit from your recruit specific cards, but it comes at a 1 for 1 1 rate. And for 1 mana, you're otherwise getting 3 1 1s or 2 1 1s. So it's a pretty big downgrade, but I think it's worth trying. Then we have Stewart the Steward. So 3 mana 3 3, Death Rattle. The next Silver Hand recruit you summon has plus 3 plus 3 and the Death Rattle. When this dies or when your next Silver Hand recruit dies or the one after that the one after that will get plus three plus three so your hero power basically becomes someone a four four and a one one i imagine if you have this early it will result in some serious snowball potential solid legendary fraud paladin we have famished fool so your whole deck is built around making one ones and as they get cleared you're going to run out of cards in hand this will help you refill so as your board dies this gets activated and you draw three cards how good is that for odd paladin i'm not sure i think it'll be all right odd paladin has been good with things with similar effects before 
before. Corridor Creeper, even after it got nerfed, was pretty good in Odd Paladin for a while, just because you're basically guaranteed to get the discount on it. Similarly, you're basically guaranteed to get the Infuse, because your hero power takes care of half of this. But you are still spending your entire turn making a 5 mana 3-5, so. Excited to play around with it. I don't know how good it'll be. Similarly, we have Stoneborn Accuser. So it's a 5 mana 5-5, five, five, Infuse 5, and it gains the battle cry, deal 5 damage. Super easy to infuse in a deck like this, and then you get burst with a body, so it's kind of like a repositioned Cloud Prince. Instead of a 4-4 that deals 6, you're getting a 5-5 five, five that deals 5. I don't know how good that's going to be in Odd Paladin, but Odd Paladin doesn't have off-board burst, and this is off-board burst. Finally, we have Divine Toll. This is kind of in here just to get to the 40th card. It is a new card. I wanted to try it out, but I think it has some interesting Odd Paladin applications. So so it's shoot five rays at random minions. If they're enemy minions, they take two damage. If it's a friendly minion, it gets plus two, plus two. What's nice about this compared to like Quartermaster, Quartermaster buffs your board if it's wide. This will buff your board if it's wide or if you only got like one or two things on it. If your opponent's board is empty, you'll still get the full plus 10, plus 10 on your side of the board. Whereas with Quartermaster, you'd have only gotten a fraction of the potential. Your opponents can have minions, which makes this worse unless you wanted to actually clear those. It's also very expensive. So I don't know that this is going to be a core odd paladin card even in the extra large version but i do think it has potential i think it's really interesting and i was excited to try it and next up we have minion inner fire so this is not spell inner fire which is why there's no palm reading there's no wave of apathy potion of madness none of that stuff that is a different deck and it's not the one that we are working on here the idea behind minion inner fire is to get something on board and let it snowball with all the the board buff stuff so we have your being web lord which when it gets buffed slows your opponent down we have crab rider if it gets buffed it's chunking for tons of damage death lord has taunt you make it big you beat aggro as far as new stuff we do have the cathedral of atonement so three mana you get three hand of a dolls so give a minion plus two plus one and draw a card pretty good you play a minion on two and if it's stuck around you get to do this right away you can play it on three and buff your next minion you play right away and it kind of keeps your hand refilled so if you're running out of gas you'll have access to an extra card three turns of the next five that this comes out then there's palicos so after you cast a spell on a friendly minion set its attack and health to be the higher of the two this is basically adding inner fire to power word shield and shadow word devour and stuff like that so i think this is really cool i thought the topsy turvy was gonna be nifty with this because it's basically with this out it's all of the upsides of inner fire with none of the downsides of topsy turvy taking the health away but topsy turvy is eh, if you don't have this out because with mini inner fire you're not just trying to otk your opponent you're also trying to create tempo if that's the the hand you have. Topsy Turvy would only be good with this, but you otherwise still benefit from things like Shadow Word Devour, Power Word Shield, just by having this guy out. So that's going to be cool. Boon of the Ascended is mostly in here just to try it. Four mana, give a minion plus two health, and then you summon a token with taunt and the same stats. So if you play Radiant on two and maybe Power Word Shield it so it has the extra health, it sticks around. This gets discounted by the Radiant Elemental. You play it on three, you get an extra minion with the same stats, and the Radiant Elemental gets bigger. Stuff like that. It has taunt, which is really nifty against aggro. I imagine this eventually gets cut from whatever the meta list ends up being, but new card, wanted to try it out. For Rogue, we have Miracle Rogue. There's a lot more stuff than even what I showcased yesterday and today that I want to play with in Rogue. I think it got a lot of really cool new tools. I guess Miracle Rogue and Secret Rogue are the two that I was most excited about. So like the deck yesterday, we're relying on the Maestro combo to get the Nulls out, but instead of trying to get a bunch of secret value and extra Nulls with Gang Up, we're trying to make big minions with the location and a big weapon with Raka. So the location is Sinstone Graveyard. You summon a 1-1 one -one Stealth Ghost, and it has plus one, plus one for each other card you played this turn. So much like Biteweed, as far as being a mini Edwin, but you pay the two mana for the minion the turn prior, or a turn prior. You get two uses out of it, and the minion comes stealthed. So you make it, and then your opponent can't just Shadow Word Death it because it's hiding behind stealth. Huge upgrade on Biteweed. And unlike the deck yesterday that was mostly relying on the Sonya Null combo to get a big Draco weapon, this can get the big weapon or the big Edwin or the big location minion with other things. All the cheap stuff is in here. We have Counterfeit Coin, Preparation, Shadow Step, Gone Fishing, Prize Plunderer. We can play a lot in the turn even without the Sonya Null combo. And then with the new location and Necrolord Draka, in addition to Edwin being what was before, 
before our only actually good payoff for that type of gameplay, we now have four cards in the deck that benefit from that gameplay. Door of Shadows is interesting. So it's one mana, draw a spell, infuse two, add a temporary copy to your hand. Infuse two isn't a tough ask. It might not be on demand with this deck just because we're playing minions out kind of sparingly. We're not like constantly flooding the board with tiny things. But as far as it just being a cantrip, you know, one mana draw a card, that's pretty good in a deck like this just on its own. It helps you draw into things to keep your miracle turns going. The temporary copy is kind of just an upside. This seems like an interesting deck to me. I'm excited to try it out. For Shutter Rock, we have an idea that I just kind of thought was cute. I don't expect this to be the way that you play Evolve Shaman or the way that you play Shutter Walk Shaman if you're trying to go for like the best meta version of those things. But the logic that got me here was Shutter Shaman is always trying to get more nature spells to go with the primal Dungeoneer so that it's more guaranteed to draw two cards. But the only good nature spell is Devolve. Some people have been running Healing Rain, but it really isn't that great. So Devolve being the one thing that you're excited to have, we're now getting a second copy of Devolve with this new set. So Primal Wave, it's three mana. It does the same thing as Devolve, but it also evolves your own side of the board. So it makes your opponent's minions worse, makes yours better, theoretically. It isn't exactly the same transition just because you can't actually push through taunts with this. So if you have a big minion, you can't play this and remove your opponent's taunts and then have that big minion go face. It's going to transform your minion. But we're building the rest of the non-essential Shutter Walk cards around Evolve stuff to supplement. So instead of it just being a giant pile of text and disruption, it's the core Shutter Walk Snowfall package with Evolve Tempo beforehand. The other new card that made the cut is Forensic Duster. Three mana, three, four battle cry. Your opponent's minions cost one more. I imagine that this is going to be a very meta shaman card. I think that this just goes straight into the lists you're used to for Shutter Shaman. Still good here with the Macaws and the Shutter Walk as far as keeping your opponent out of the game. I got this idea when I was thinking about is it worth it to run the Primal Wave just as the third and fourth copy of Devolve because we're running Serenite Chain Gang anyway. And I had to build it. I'm excited to try it out. <laughs> Another kind of goofy idea is Discard Warlock with Tome Tampering. A lot of people are kind of scared of this card think maybe it's going to get banned because there's some darkest hour -y type of applications, but I don't see that being reliable enough to actually be devastating. We'll see if I eat my words in a week, <laughs> but otherwise the deck just kind of feels like Big Priest to me. That's not my favorite deck to play, so I wanted to do something spicier with it. What we have here is all the stuff that benefits from you discarding your entire hand. <laughs> we got the Tome Tampering to discard our entire hand and add a bunch of one cost versions of our cool stuff back to our deck. And we have Cataclysm to be a third and fourth copy of Discard Your Hand. So we have that redundancy. Our deck is built so that our hand should be discarded. So having a third and fourth copy of things that discard our hand is good. We have Lakari Sacrifice, the best quest ever if you ignore all the other ones. It gives you a five mana card that adds two imps to the board at the end of every turn. So even if you have nothing in your hand that wants to be discarded, you will get at least the portal. So if you Cataclysm on four, you will have a play the following turn. And Cataclysm into Lakari Sacrifice isn't that bad. <laughs> We have Boneweb Egg, Clutch Mother Zavis, Silverware Golem, the new Suffocating Shadows. So this is obviously redundant if we're using Cataclysm, but ideally we discard it with Tome of Tampering. But if your opponent has a Death Rattle Minion, maybe the Cataclysm clears the first layer. And depending on if it works this way, this maybe clears the second layer. If you're thinking about playing Tome Tampering on Curve, Tome Tampering is three mana up do nothing. This helps clear an enemy minion, so you're not just falling way behind on tempo when you play Tome Tampering. Fist of Draxis, High Priestess the Call, and Hand of Gul'dan. There's so much in here that benefits from being discarded from your hand that whenever you need to rip your Cataclysm or Tome of Tampering, you're probably going to do a bunch to the board. So yeah, this is just like a wacky take on discard lock to use the new Tome Tampering card. I played a similar list in the theory crafting stream, and I thought that was pretty fun. I'm less limited on deck building choices for this one so i have high hopes for this being interesting but yeah we'll see how it goes and finally for warrior we have enraged charge warrior this is very similar to the deck i showcased yesterday except that one was leaning a lot harder into the sword otk combo and this is leaning more into recognizing that any minion in your deck can be a threat we have anima extractor depending on how your your board is this can buff your hand by a ton whenever a friendly minion takes damage give a random minion in your hand plus one plus one involve this in your skip return and suddenly whatever's left over in your hand is huge and once your whatever leftover minion in your hand is huge gets big enough you give a charge if you want you can copy it with blood sworn mercenary the idea is flexible win cons when combined with charge there's also imbued axe 
I don't know how good this card is. It's mostly in here because it's new and I wanted to play with it. I imagine I would cut this eventually if I was serious about this deck moving forward just because it seems really slow to me and it relies on you to have had your minions played and to have had them die. So it's really only good if your skipper turn happened and your skipper turn is your most powerful turn in the game. What is nice about it is it's giving minions plus one health so you can get the extra tick off of Acolyte of Pain, for example. But basically, I thought the flexible win con with charge aspect of yesterday legendary weapon OTK deck was really interesting and I wanted to lean into that a little bit more and see how I like that and anime extractor is really interesting so I'm excited to see how that goes that about wraps things up I hope you found at least one deck that you were interested in trying remember to like subscribe and comment for more Martian videos enjoy expansion release day and thank you so much for watching